I didn't prepare anything. I just I have it open to right. In, I have the lineups right in front of me, and I just pressed record. And this is my blunt and honest view. So. It's football, anything can happen, so we're not going to treat this as, oh yeah, City has zero chance. Uh, we're actually going to have the debate and we're going to go player by player. First up, Victor Valdez versus Ederson, and this might sound controversial, but I am actually going to go with Ederson. I think he is overall the better goalkeeper. Current winner of the FIFA Best Goalkeeper in the World Award uh, from the Best Awards. Um, for some reason, not in the Team of the Year, but... Okay, FIFA. Um, this might sound controversial because Victor Valdez is a very, very good goalkeeper. Um, I watched the 2009 campaign. I remember some of the games very vividly. I remember uh, where I watched uh, some of the games in the Champions League. And honestly, Victor Valdez didn't have the same impact as Ederson had, especially in the final of the Champions League. And I think Ederson, with his distribution, I think gives him the slight edge over Victor Valdez. Whether it's reflexes or diving, I think Ederson's reflexes and diving is incredibly underrated. People don't like to talk about it because he doesn't get the ball too much because we are a possession-based team. But you could go either way with this. If somebody picks Victor Valdez, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say no. No, you're wrong. No, no Val, neither Valdez or Ederson are clear of the other. But. It, you know, it, it's a little bit similar because both these players are a little bit underappreciated because of their uh, nations, can't be, uh, well, because of their counterparts, uh, because of their teammate in their nation's uh, uh, lineup. Victor Valdez is a tiny bit overshadowed because of Iker Casillas. Iker Casillas, one of the best goalkeepers in the history of the game. And then Ederson, obviously, with, um, with Allison, in my opinion, who is the best goalkeeper in the world. Uh, he's he, yeah, he's not anywhere in the realm of uh, Casillas, uh, not yet. Um, I don't know if he'll get to that level, but regardless, Ederson, both Ederson and Valdez are kind of a little bit underappreciated because of those two players, but if I had to choose one, I'm going to go with Ederson. This pains me to do it, Silvino versus Ake. Silvino, obviously a two-ton Champions League winner with Barcelona. Um, he is the one player in that Barca team that I don't have the best of knowledge with. Obviously, I watched him during the 2009 treble winning season, but... His other years and other teams, especially his other Barca years, I just don't have the best of knowledge. But from what I saw in that team, I might have to choose him ahead of Nathan Ake. And I look, I love Nathan Ake. I have, I love Nathan Ake as a person, as a professional, as a player. I've seen him shut down Salah. I've seen him shut down um, uh, Bukayo Saka. I've seen him shut down some of the best wingers um, in the Premier League. Um, in the FA Cup and in the Champions League over the course of the treble winning season. For the first like six months of our season, he was actually my player of the season, all right? Yes, Holland was scoring all those goals. Kevin De Bruyne is Kevin De Bruyne. He was my player of the season. But if I had to choose between him and Silvino, Silvino, for those of you who watch them, I'm gonna have to go with Silvino. This might seem controversial, but if you actually watch both of them play, yeah, I think I'm gonna have to go with Silvino. Going from left to right, it's gonna be Gerard Piquet versus Ruben Diaz. Ruben Diaz versus Gerard uh, Piquet. And yeah, uh, I'm gonna say it. I'm going with Ruben Diaz. Um, I'm sorry. You're gonna see a theme in this video where defensively, actually, I'm gonna have to go with City. Offensively, I'm gonna give the edge to the 2009 Barca team. Our trouble winning season has to do with our defensive prowess and how we fixed our defensive problems because of uh, Ruben Diaz and uh, John Stones. Defense, we didn't concede a lot of goals in the Champions League. We didn't concede a lot of goals in the Premier League. There were a lot of games where we won 2-0, 1-0, 3-0, 4-0, 2-0, 1-0, 3-0, 2-0, 1-0, back to back to back to back to back to back because defensively we were sound that season this season we're leaking goals left right and center every game like i i get shocked if city get a clean sheet because i don't know we, we uh we definitely don't have that defensive mentality that we had last season barca fans unfortunately i'm gonna have to come at y'all for a little bit because some of y'all overrate this guy so much Okay, some some people put PK in the in the same bracket as Puyol and Sergio Ramos, and it thoroughly pisses me off. I was a Barca fan. 
a long time ago, okay, like 2005, four, six, like around that time, I was a bar, I was watching Barcelona religiously, okay, and I was watching Rafa Marquez, I was watching uh, Larson, I was watching Deco, I was watching the old school Barca legends, okay, Barca fans now are Barca fans because of Messi and Xavi and Iniesta, some of which were beyond their prime, not Messi though, and Rafa Marquez and PK are not in the same realm. Rafa Marquez is a much better defender than Gerard Pique. I'm sorry, I watched both of them. Rafa Marquez is better. Uh, PK, I don't was never the best defender in La Liga. I don't think I was ever in that. Out of, I, I was ever in that mindset. I thought uh, one of the most underrated defenders in La Liga over the last ten years is Diego Godin. That's a player that I I love so much. I think he's incredibly underrated. Diego Godin is a much better defender than Gerard Pique. If you know football, if you watch both of them play, if you watch their defensive prowess, you know that Diego Godin is better than Pique. That being said, Pique is still a legend. Like Pique is still a top class player. Um, but I'm gonna have to go with Ruben Diaz on this. So this is a bit of a strange one because it is Torre, yeah, yeah, Torre versus. It's uh. It's going to have to be John Stones because Puyo is playing on the right. Yeah, so Yaya Torre versus John Stones. Obviously, football player wise, I'm going to have to go with Yaya Torre, but defensively wise, I'm going to have to go with John Stones. I mean, if we're talking, I mean, obviously, like, <laughs> they're both city players, and Yaya Torre is a city legend. So either way, I'm picking a city player. So. Nothing to do with their footballing ability. Yaya Torre is obviously an infinite better footballer than John Stones. But what John Stones did in the final of the Champions League, it still amazes me to this day. 11 completed dribbles. Completely bossed that Champions League final. Okay. Look, Rodri got man of the match, but John Stones had a better game from start to finish than Rodri. Rodri was absolutely impeccable in that game, but John Stones did something that was out of his comfort zone. He did he was dribbling the ball. John Stones is like what 62 61 63 dribbling the ball. He was dribbling past Inter players. He was getting by past 2 3 4 players like it was absolutely insane. So again, this is going to be controversial, but this might be the last time I put a city player in this lineup in this combined lineup, but yeah, I'm going with John Stones purely because you know, it's so unfair to Yaya Torre, but you know, I'm gonna go with the center half, even though John Stones played CDM. This is such a weird choice. I'm going. I have to choose between a midfielder playing center back or a <laughs> or a center back who played as a six. Um, defensively, John Stones did drop back and he was playing as a center back, but so I'm gonna. You know what? I'm gonna go with John Stones. Next up, we got Puyol versus Kyle Walker. So, again, another interesting comparison. It's hard to do this, ladies and gentlemen, because they, you know, it, it, I'm comparing a 4-3-3 to a 3-2-4-1. It's, uh, you know, it, it's going to have some pretty weird uh, comparisons, but Puyol is one of the best defenders of the 21st century, so I know Kyle Walker is an out-and-out -out right back, um, but Puyol, you know, a lot of a lot of uh, managers are have been trying to do this, playing center halves as right backs. I see Xavi trying to do it with Arojo. I see um, uh, Unai Emery trying to do this with uh, I think Konza. He plays he's, one Aston Villa uh, center half is playing. I, I've seen him playing right back. I've seen Matty Cash being dropped to the bench a lot. I'm seeing uh, Arteta trying to play Ben White at right back. I've seen um, him trying to play a lot of center halves um, as fullbacks, and I see a lot of managers doing this. Pep Guardiola pretty much made this into a world-class type of tactic and Kyle Walk and Stones and Diaz and Akanji play and, and uh, Nathan Ake it wasn't the first time I can see Puyol playing on the on the right here so I have to choose between Puyol and Kyle Walker I'm sorry to Kyle Walker this is 100% Carlos Puyol Busquets versus Rodri um It pains me to do it, but I'm going to have to go with Sergio Busquets, and you can't be mad at that, ladies and gentlemen. You you, you really can't be mad at that. It's, it's not strong. He's not fast, but intelligence-wise, passing-wise, dribbling-wise, incredible. I know, I know Rodri's an amazing player, too. You saw those step-overs he did against Newcastle. I mean, Busquets can't do that. Or at least, I've never seen Busquets really do that. I don't know. I'm sorry. Um... 
it just it just feels wrong to put Rodri ahead of Sergio Busquets. So yeah, I, I can't, I can't. I'm not really comfortable with this. So I'm going with Sergio Busquets. Xavi versus Gundogan. Gundogan, my uncle. Barcelona are ruining his entire reputation. Uh, I, I, I'm seeing pictures of him depressed, losing finals because of Pena. Why didn't you come out for that uh, for that Vinicius horrible touch, man? I saw the game. Ridiculous. Araujo, terrible performance. Um. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry, El Cagón to one, but you know, I I'm not gonna. Xavi's one of the best midfielders of the 21st century, you know. You know Gundogan has scored so many goals. Especially, you know, I remember, I remember the game against Everton. Those amazing, uh, that amazing touch. And that volley. But yeah, this is Xavi. Oh my god, it just keeps getting harder and harder and harder. Iniesta versus Kevin De Bruyne. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh, I just realized I had a shirt on the wall right now. Wow. Wow. Iniesta versus Kevin De Bruyne. Again, it's very similar to the Rodri Busquets thing. Like, I'm not ready to put Kevin De Bruyne ahead of Iniesta. Because I saw Iniesta in that season and he was absolutely sensational. Obviously, Kevin De Bruyne was as well. De Bruyne, I mean, uh, that, that, uh, that goal against Real Madrid at the, um, at the Bernabeu. His performance in that game was stunning. Absolutely stunning. De Bruyne is that guy. He had people shaking in their boots when he was warming up against Newcastle. When he was warming up against Huddersfield. People were scared. Rival fans all over the Premier League. All over England. Tweeting. Talking. Making videos about this guy's return. Is that guy. But Iniesta that season, man. Was unreal. Won the World Cup the year after. Won the Euros the year before. So, I know it sucks that I'm not putting Kevin De Bruyne, but I'm not picking Kevin De Bruyne because we are literally talking about one of the best midfielders to ever play football in Andres Iniesta. So, again, I apologize to Prince Harry. So, into the attack. We're going to go from left to right again. First matchup is uh, very close. I think this is the closest one out of all 22. Thierry Henry versus Jack... Grealish and I I'm not really sure um <laughs> relax relax oh my goodness it's Grealish okay now <laughs> look um if any of you watched our Champions League like I'm talking about to, I'm talking to the non-city fans here if any of you watched our Champions League final games if you can't come to the conclusion that Jack Grealish was absolutely pivotal you don't know football, and you're blind. Jack Grealish, if he didn't start those games, we would not have won the treble. I'm going to say that again. If Jack Grealish didn't start those Champions League games, and in our pivotal games in the Premier League, he would not. we, we would not have won the treble. I've seen him dribble past two, three, four Bayern München players in their own playground. I saw him dribble past two Inter players, cut inside, pass it off to, I think, Stones in the in the uh, Champions League final. Made Carvajal look like a five-year-old kid at the Etihad. Jack Grealish has done a lot of unnoticed work over that treble-winning season. Nobody wants to give him the credit because people are afraid to give him the credit. I really believe people are afraid to say that Jack Grealish is a top player because they're afraid of other... Twitter and other keyboard warriors looking at them like, what? Eh. You think Jack Grealish is a good player? Oh my god. Eh. He's a fantastic player. Obviously, this is obviously Thierry Henry. Thierry Henry is a legend of football. Um, and he is, in my opinion, he thoroughly deserved that Ballon d'Or over, over uh, Nedved. But um, regardless, this is obviously Thierry Henry. Lionel Messi versus the uh, Portuguese Messi in Bernardo Silva. Um... Look, uh, we know this is messy, but just a quick word on Bernardo Silva. Um, incredible player. He's a legend of the Premier League. He is. Um, Roy Keane said something about David Silva that I think people forgot about. I remember Roy Keane saying that David Silva was... He, he belongs in the realm of the greatest midfielders in Premier League history. With, uh, he even said he belongs in the same realm as Ryan Giggs. Greatest captain in Premier League history, Roy Keane. 
saying David Silva is one of the greatest players, greatest midfielders, players in Premier League history. And he said that if, if he played against David Silva, David Silva would, would have turned him inside out. I think Bernardo Silva is is almost at David Silva's level. And if he's almost at David Silva's level, that means he's a legend of the Premier League. I think he already is. That 2018-19 season is the stuff of legends. The stuff of legend. Bernardo Silva that year was absolutely unplayable. Obviously, he's going against um, the best footballer of our generation. Whether you think he's the best football player of our generation all time, this is obviously Lionel Messi. Um, Ronaldo Nazario, Diego Maradona, and Lionel Messi, in my opinion, those are the three best football players of all time. Um, it's hard to pick between those three, but um, yeah, Lionel Messi that season was unreal. Unreal. Barcelona didn't win because of their defensive prowess. You can see I, in the beginning of this video, I told you that we might see a lot more City players than you might think in the defense, but in the midfield and in the attack, you can notice that I'm not choosing any. I'm not choosing many, if not any, City players as of right now. But it their attack was incredible. Messi on the right with Henri on the left with Iniesta, Xavi, and Busquets. Are you are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Obviously, this is Messi. This is obviously really harsh on Bernardo Silva because you could put any player in that position in the 21st century and. They're going to get overshadowed by Lionel Messi, so this is Messi. Last but not least, we have the uh, striker debate. In my opinion, the uh, joint greatest African football player of all time, Samuel Eto'o. Uh, joint, obviously, with uh, George Weah. Obviously, drug, there's obviously, you know, Drogba, Salah, Yaya Torre. So many other players that I'm, I'm forgetting to mention right now, and I apologize, but Eto'o versus Holland. Um... Yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to go with Samuel Eto'o. It pains me to do it. I'm I'm being unbiased here. I'm going to have to go with Samuel Eto'o. Eto'o won a treble that season. And then he wins a treble the season after. Back-to-back <laughs> -back trebles, man, with Inter. Wow. He, I mean, it's a definition of a game changer. Holland is definitely that type of player, too. We didn't win the Champions League. He comes in, we win the Champions League. But other players definitely stepped up as well. But between Eto and Holland, I watched both seasons, and I'm going mainly on the player's ability, a little bit less on the accolades. I, I, Eto didn't win UEFA Men's Player of the Year. Holland did. Holland was the Holland won the Golden Boot. But Eto that year, if he was, he was unreal. The pace, the the power, like he. He, he, he doesn't look like a physically imposing player. Fast, so fast on the ball, so skillful, so explosive as Samuel Eto'o. Yeah, I'm going to have to go with Eto'o. So no City player makes it into the uh, combined midfield and attack for this team. There's a big part of me that's saying that I was a little bit too nice. Um, obviously, Eto'o is a better football player than Holland, but Holland had a better year than Eto'o. Uh, Busquets... I rank higher than Rodri, but Rodri had a better year. So yes, I'm using their year specifically, but I'm also using the player's ability too. That's a criteria I'm using. Hard, you know, it's hard doing these types of videos because you have a sort of criteria for one debate and then for the next debate, you're trying to use a criteria, but then it makes you pick a player that, and then you're just like, oh God, I'm choosing this player ahead of this player. Ugh, it's, it, it's weird, but... It's hard to do this because, uh, like I said, it's a 4-3-3 versus a 3-2-4-1. So I'm going to compare right backs to center backs, CDMs to center mids. Like it's um, center attacking mids to center mids, you know, left wingers to strikers. You know, it's it's beyond difficult. No team is unbeatable. There are obviously some great teams where it'll be very hard to do. This is by no means a cakewalk for City. Like, I, I'm not saying that whatsoever. I'm not saying that City would demolish that team, but... I'm not saying that any of these teams would get demolished. But, you know, I'm looking at that attack, man. And, like, Messi in the World Cup, 36 years old, provided one of the best assists I think I've ever seen in a World Cup. He nutmegs Nathan Ake against, against the Netherlands, if you remember. It was 36-year-old Messi well out of his prime. This is prime Messi who can, who can run against Nathan Ake. 
So it will be a tougher matchup. Um, a humble opinion. I think if we played this, if, if these if these teams played each other in a seven game series, I think this Barca team would win four to two. Four to two, yeah. I think if we played three games each in our respective stadiums, I think we might be able to beat them twice. But then they would beat us once and then we would not be able to beat them at their home stadium. Played in a Champions League final, both teams at their best. Eto, Henri, Messi, Xavi, Iniesta, Busquets at their best. I would say that the final score, and like I said, I didn't prepare any of this. This is literally my gut feeling. I would say that they would win 3-1. to one. Yeah, 3-1. to one. I'm not going to speak on this topic anymore. Thank you all so much for watching.